last week on the program, we delve into the Tigray crisis in Ethiopia's northern region, a conflict which began in November last year when Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed ordered a military offensive against regional forces. I'll be talking to Vanaza Gibramedin, a Tigrayan human rights advocate based in Washington, D.C. That's Diplomatic Channel and Wrap. Let's check in on other discussions in diplomatic circles. We'll be right back. I want to bring in Meaza Gebremedin, a human rights advocate based in Washington, D.C. She's also Tigrayan. Welcome, Meaza, and thank you for joining me on Diplomatic Channel. Thank you so much for having me here today. Let's begin with how uh, you remember the crisis in Tigray starting. Sure. Um, so the ongoing genocidal war in Tigray uh, started long before uh, November 4. This is a genocidal war that was waged against the people of Tigray, our culture and identity uh, by uh, Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed, as well as the Eritrean dictator Isaiah Saforki and Amhara expansionist elites. Uh, this war was waged against the, the people of Tigray because these three main actors do not see a future for their narrow political narrative in Ethiopia in the presence of strong ethnic minorities like uh, the people of Tigray, who take great amount of pride in their uh, in their advocacy towards an inclusive Ethiopia, an Ethiopia that gives equal rights to all nations and nationalities in the country, and that assures a political arrangement such as the multinational ethnic, the multinational federalism that Ethiopia has been known for for the past 27 years, and also a group of people that take great amount of pride in uh, assuring their rights to self-rule and self-determination. So because of this, uh, the current Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed, alongside the other actors I mentioned earlier, have been working towards subjugating and exterminating the people of Tigray for over three years, not only by blocking roads that connect Tigray to the mainland at Addis Ababa, but also by blocking foreign direct investment that could have gone to Tigray and create a opportunity for Tigrans, at the same time by selectively um, prosecuting Tigrans in the, in, in the Ethiopian nation and also blaming all evils on the, Ethiopian pe on the Tigran people and also actively using state media to dehumanize and, and spread hate amongst the Tigran community towards Tigrans. So because of this, there has been a very hostile environment for Tigrans for the past three years. And to make matters worse, on November 1st, the Ethiopian uh, Prime Minister, Abiy Ahmed, waged a genocidal war on the people of Tigray by inviting Eritrean troops, as well as drones that were sponsored by United Arab Emirates and Somali troops. Because of that, you see a very uh, saddening humanitarian crisis that is unfolding now, claiming the lives of thousands and thousands of Tigrans. You, you, you've described the ongoing fighting as a genocide. You honestly believe that the Ethiopian government wants to wipe out the people of Tigray alongside the rebels? Yes, with absolute certainty. Not only the actions that are uh, being witnessed on the ground, but also the intentions of the Ethiopian government has been quite clear about the, the genocidal nature of what's happening. The Ethiopian government actually did very little to hide their intention, intentions of wiping out the, the entire ethnic Tigrans. Uh, in his visit to, to, to Tigray, uh, the European envoy, uh, envoy um, Finland's foreign minister, he told the, the, the UN and his, uh, the EU in his parliamentary address that the Ethiopian government officials have actually told him that they have intentions to wipe out Tigrans for, for the coming hundred years. So this is not something only Tigrans are talking about, but also something that has been documented and witnessed by international actors such as uh, the Finland's uh, foreign minister. So. Uh, What's happening is a genocide because genocide is nothing but the intentional and purposeful destruction of an entire ethnic group. And Tigrans have been subjected to such kind of activities through uh, systemic starvation and weaponized uh, rape, as well as destruction of all resources that were uh, very beneficial to the survival of Tigrans. Now, the um, Tigran forces uh, do claim to have also attacked uh, the Ethiopian military, and uh, they have accused the Eritrean um, uh, forces also of uh, killing, you know, Tigrayans. But the government has denied this, saying it's only been targeting, you know, the rebels. Um, what are you hearing from, you know, those on the ground 
about what exactly is going on. As I understand, you know, there's very little communication coming out of Tigray. Yeah, so because of the communication blackout that was sanctioned by the Ethiopian federal government, there hasn't been uh, enough flow of information. However, international journalists as well as international aid workers were able to document testimonies of the uh, genocide survivors that are country currently either in the refugee camps in Sudan or also in different uh, uh, camps that are sheltering internally displaced people people across Tigray. So the survivors have told us time and time and again that they were raped by Eritrean as well as Ethiopian troops and Amhara militias. They have told us how this forces of uh, evil have actually destroyed their destroyed their livelihood. They they have burned crops, they have massacred innocent civilians not only in their homes but also in place of worship. They have destroyed mosques, they have destroyed church. So what's happening on the ground is quite harrowing. People are being targeted everywhere. At the same time, there was there is just a new report documenting the harrowing reality in the Western Tigray parts of Humura, how um, you know, bodies were tied and they, they were tied their hands and they were massacred after that and the bodies were fled to Sudan. So what's happening is really, really saddening. And the, the most uh, really disheartening thing is that the international community is aware of what's happening on the ground. They know who's doing what, but they're not taking concrete steps towards ending the ongoing genocide. And in a way, they're emboldening the genocidal forces to continue committing war crimes and crimes against humanity upon the people of Tigray. You've mentioned the international community. The UN has been advocating, you know, for aid to get to Tigray. Um, they say the Egyptian military forces are blocking the only route leading to uh, Tigray at the moment. But the African Union, which Tigray forces have said they do not trust, um, uh, has already named um, former Nigerian President Olusha Gwabasanjo as AU High Representative for the Horn of Africa. Uh, he'll be resuming in, I think, a couple of weeks. What sort of perspective and solution do you think he could bring to what's currently going on? The African Union has clearly taken sides with the Ethiopian government and they have been, uh, you know, basically amplifying the propaganda that was being used by the Ethiopian government. Uh, they even called what's happening to the people of Tigray as a law and order enforcement rather than uh, calling it for what it is as a genocide. So uh, I actually am not surprised if the Tigray government has a hesitation in believing or trusting that. African Union. However, I, I want to make clear that His Excellency of Asanjo uh, can do right by the people of Tigray, not only by taking the initiative, but also by calling out the African Union for all the mistakes that, 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 that they have committed when it comes to the people of Tigray. I am not surprised, but I want to highlight how we're talking, we're having this discussion at the backdrop of a very dire humanitarian crisis. People in Tigray do not have access to humanitarian aid because the Ethiopian government, alongside the expansionist Amhara elites, have blocked the road that connects um, Tigray to the rest of the country and that could have been used as a corridor to deliver a life-saving humanitarian aid. Um, since August 20, there hasn't been a single truck that entered into Tigray with humanitarian aid. People in Tigray are not dying only of, you know, the war planes and the drones, but also because of starvation and because of lack of medicine. So I, I want to make sure that we're having this discussion about peace and negotiation at the backdrop of people dying of starvation, of a man-made famine. Um, as a, um, you do understand that there is, you know, violence being committed on both sides by both sides, um, committed by both sides, beg your pardon. You do have the Ethiopian uh, military forces, um, which you rightly point out are uh, supposedly killing on, uh, innocent uh, Tigrayans in the Tigray region, but you also have the rebels who are killing, you know, Tigray military forces. If I'm understanding what you're saying, Tigrayans want to be autonomous. Is that the point? The grants want to have their right self-determination respected. That is a constitutional right that people have fought for and paid with blood and flesh. So they want this right to be respected. We want to be administrated by a government that we voted for and that we elected. We, don't want, we do not want an Ethiopia 
that imposes leadership upon us. That's not democracy. So this is the only thing we want. But with regards to allegations of the Tigray Defense Forces committing uh, war crimes that they took, and forces as well as the Amhara militia and Eritreans have been known for, I think the track record of the Tigray Defense Forces speaks for itself. The Tigray Defense Forces to date have been a very disciplined and well-mannered defense forces that do not really commit war crimes that put the interest of civilians at the heart of their action. But if there are any allegations the Tigray governments and, their, and, and the people have been willing and are ready to work with any international organization that is interested in going to the ground and having an independent investigation that would look into any allegations of war crimes and that will bring about justice. So I, I want to make sure that the international community understands that the Tigray people and their defense forces alongside their government are willing and ready to work with the international community to bring light to any allegations of war crimes. Well, it's been 10 months, I think, since you last heard from home. Are you reaching out to family members? Are you able to speak to them and find out how they're doing? I understand that this might be, you know, uh, quite, quite hard for you, not being able to, to contact people at home as much as you can. So how has that been like for you? I, alongside so many other Tigrans in the diaspora, uh, haven't heard from my family members that are currently in Tigray. And this is mainly because the Ethiopian forces, as well as their coins, coins have blocked our communication channels. There are no phones, there, are, there is no internet in Tigray. And it's mainly because, you know, all the public infrastructure has been destroyed because the Ethiopian government wants to hide all the war crimes and crimes against humanity that they have been committing against our people. So I do not know if my family members have been raped by one of the invading forces. I do not know if they have fallen victim to the massacres that have been apparent everywhere across Tigray. I do not know if they are starving to death or if they are you know, dying because lack of medication. So as, as somebody who is in the developed part of the world, someone who can actually do something to help my family, but because of the blockade, I cannot do anything. I just have to wait sit and hope that my family survive all of this horrific reality so it makes me feel helpless but at the same time i recognize that this is not just about my family members it's about our collective identity as tigrans and i hope and i pray that the international community summons all the necessary political will to intervene and do what's right to save innocent people that are suffering at the hands of genocidal forces yeah, as our prayers and thoughts also with you and uh, with the people of Tigray at this time, no one wants to see another humanitarian crisis, especially in Ethiopia. Thanks again for joining me on Diplomatic Channel. Thank you for having me.